Hi, Alex. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me here at your office. Thanks for having me because we're on your channel at the moment. Oh, yeah. We're on my channel, but at yeah. your office. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, okay, so you told me not to tell people that I'm so honored to be here, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <but. laughs> no, I didn't say that exactly. I, I'm glad to have you in the flesh because obviously we did a podcast together. Yeah. You were the first guest that I yes. had on the Cosmic Skeptic podcast, yeah. available on uh, iTunes and Spotify and YouTube. Uh, uh, if you, if, if your listeners feel like giving it a giving it a watch, but uh, no, definitely, you were the first guest, and I have to commend you for it actually because. Although I'd been thinking about making a podcast for a while, it was kind of like a I'll get around to it type thing. And then you had that whole fiasco where you got deplatformed yes. from the the university, right? Right. And the the Charwell article article that they didn't publish online. Right. And I reached out to you and said, Hey, you should come on my channel and talk about this. And then I thought, Well, screw it. Let's make it a podcast episode. So Could that's what really get it start started. Really? That. Yeah, because otherwise I, I probably wouldn't have bothered. Like, yeah, I've got some great guests now. You know, I had Peter Singer and I reached out to all these people <laughs> and stuff, but like. I wouldn't have bothered unless I already had the setup, and okay. I probably wouldn't have bothered with the setup unless I had a first guest. So, yeah, you've got a, you've, wow. I've got a lot to thank you for in that respect. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um, there's, you, you're going to have a guest on that I'm not allowed to mention. Strictly, no. Yes, and so, no clues either. So no clues, but it's a big deal. Is that's okay? So it's a, I was amazed that it's you're going. It's a good guest. It's a great guest. It's a good guest. So just check out. Just if you're not subscribed to Cosmic Skeptic. Do you prefer people on your subscribe to your YouTube channel or your podcast? No? Uh, YouTube is like the place because I put the podcast episodes with the okay. video on YouTube. Right. But you can also, if you prefer to listen it to it in audio form, you can get it on iTunes and Spotify as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I, th I think most people that know me, they must know you. Like you're okay. I don't know. I don't know about that. Okay. I've been I've been surprised sometimes when like learning how audiences don't don't overlap. Okay. Okay. Well, if you don't, if they don't know, if you want to be intellectually like challenged. Like because like you know then I think your channel is one of the best ones out there. Sorry, I just for a minute it sounds like you're saying I'm intellectually challenged. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you want, <laughs> if you want to be intellectually challenged, listen to this guy, man. He's, he's gonna mess you up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean our, our content like is most content out there. You like you get it, you get some information. It's pretty much, but with your content is the kind of content that you have to pause and like what and then you rewind like it's pretty good exercise like i al always feel hmm. like i went to gym or something when i watch your videos which is good um i don't oh, know well, thanks no, that, no yeah. that, that that means a lot it does because i try to make them i try to make videos like accessible but right. at the same time not not just really easy no 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 i, no, I, mean, I don't want it to be easy because i want that that muscle to be exercised yeah, I, want, I want people to be actively yes actively listening it's like it's like reading a book right when you the reason why reading a book is seen as kind of nerdy, I spend a lot of time thinking about this. Why is it that if you listen to a podcast or you watch a YouTube video, it's not considered as intellectual or nerdy as reading a book? And I think it's because with a book, you have to actively engage. You right. can't just you can't just let it happen in front of you. You have to actually do the thing, right? You have to do it. Right. And uh, with YouTube videos, you don't have to. So you can quite easily... I used to sit and play video games and listen to things so, so I get my eyes busy. Yeah. But I realized like, if you, if you actively engage then you get so much more from it. And that's why books are so good, because you're actively engaging. Right. So I try to make my videos such that you have to be But But even, really with, books, even with books are books that you just I just go through like nothing, right? But then there are other books that every page seem to be a a challenge, right? So yeah. like so I mean, yeah, but yeah, but I get what you're I used saying. to so I, I, I think I think I am quite a slow reader. But I used to think I was a really, really slow reader because I'd see people talking about how they were reading like a book a week. Or right. a book a day or whatever it was, and I thought, damn, I can't, I can't get through a book a month or three months. It takes me a year to get through some books, and then I suddenly realized it was probably the books I was reading, you know. And right. this this summer, when I had a bit of time, I decided to read some like kind of fairly easy novels, right. and I got through them in like a few days, and, right, I, and, right, right. and I realized it, it's not the reading speed; it's it's the content, it's the content you know? yeah, yeah. And because it took me so long to read through some of this stuff, it's really stuck in my head, and I can remember things yes. from books quite well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so today. I mean, I'm going to cut this into two pieces and um, get two videos out of this. Um, one of them is going to be about veganism, right? And I yes. think you might hate me at the end of this. I, I, I hope we could remain friends. I don't hate you. I just hate what you do. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> that's and a difference. The other one is about morality. And by the way, for the people that watch my channel, th this might be new. So I'm going to maybe we could like 
do it more basic introductory and if you guys want to get more advanced version of it maybe they could come to your channel i'll i'll, right? I'll try and see what i can do sorry I, I just noticed this this thing keeps making noises i don't know if you can hear that yeah i can uh, hear. oh i had the thing turned up my bad yeah no worries all right so but i, I think we're going to start with veganism okay that's fine um, by me okay but you promise you're not gonna because you, i might i mean i, I might I mean, you have put you're like you're like when when, someone, when a friend comes to you and you're like, "Hey, listen, um, promise you won't hate me," but and it's like, I'm not going to promise that. But no, yeah. I I can't imagine no. there's anything you could possibly say here on that would make me all right, all right. not want to be your Cause friend. Because I've seen I've seen you get frustrated <laughs> with people over this. And no, I only get I frustrated just... with them in a, in a kind of right. in an argumentative sense. They're right, still right. great friends. I had a big right. argument with Matt Dillahunty about this. Right, it was right. really it was a frustrating conversation. It was really uh, it was really difficult, and and we were talking past each other a lot. But like we went for dinner afterwards, and right, it was right, fine. right. Right. Yeah. But also We're remember friends. that you have thought, put a lot more thought into this than I have, right? So uh, be forgiving of my ignorance if I say something you think is stupid. But okay, so when it comes to veganism, right? Um, I guess you're making the claim, so I should just... Uh, you're claiming that... So I have, I, have, I have a huge problem with veganism, right? I'm not even... I'm, I'm actually going beyond just saying that, yeah, it's a good thing. I guess vegans are doing it, but it's not for me. Um, I actually don't, I'm actually, might be even against veganism mm -hmm. to some extent. Yeah, there's, there's a rather, rather large anti-vegan crowd. It tends to be, the, I, the popular anti-vegan crowd is a bit of a uh, alarmist, silly YouTube yeah, group. But I, I know you're not one of those. But No, no. I mean, more, I've seen, I haven't seen anybody bring up the points that I bring up yet. Maybe they're out there. But most anti-vegan arguments that make, no sense to well, me. The, the most popular anti-vegan arguments are things like walk, walk, walking into a into a vegan restaurant and like pulling out a dead squirrel or something like because it's because it's funny and making a point. You know, that's Wait. what that's what that's what these people do. They'll like go to vegan markets and they'll stand there and just eat raw meat. Okay, um, no, that's uh, yeah. because they're just trying to make a point, and it's like yeah, ve no, a lot of vegans get very upset about that kind of thing, and I, I just I just think, man, just. No, but like people are like, but 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 bacon tastes so good. I like, mm -hmm. and I was like, well, that's not really an they, argument. They know, they know they're making a joke, but right. the problem is it's just not funny. And I don't mean it's not funny because it's it's a horrific subject matter. Like that's fine. You can joke about anything with me. I I have quite a dark sense of humor, but right. it's just unfunny when people are like, huh, but bacon though. It's like, well done. That's really clever. That's yep. really funny. You're like a you're like a 35 year old man on Facebook. Like, right. come on, be be more. But be, I haven't more interesting I haven't in seen anything. I mean, I think I think so far I've. The comments I have, I think of, um, I know, I'm, uh, of course I think that, but I haven't seen anybody bring anything against veganism. To me, it seems like, of course, veganism, vegans make sense if this is the only arguments okay. against them, right? Uh, the other argument is like, oh, it's not like they make the natural, uh, the appeal to nature. Yeah, nonsense. Nonsense. Like, well, you know, they pointed teeth and like, well, I mean, we were also naturally when, you know, supposed you, to... You know, who, you know who have the, the biggest... Um, Biggest of the the biggest version of those those teeth, the teeth that are supposed to be the ones that are specifically for eating meat, mm -hmm. hippos. Yeah, but it doesn't even hippos. I know, so they're not, of course. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, look, we can play this game if you want to. No, but but even if they were right, okay, that's the you, thing. It's even, like it's like you're wrong, but even if you were right, it doesn't matter because yeah, that's not a point. Yeah, so I would say like even I would give it to vegans that if we were not even supposed to eat vegetables at all, and we were only supposed to eat meat. Right and making eating, you know, um, vegan food is it would make us extremely sick, okay? Mm -hmm. And we could show that. I would still think that, given the you know pain that we're causing, we w we should take the sickness, we should take the misery. I would I would give it to them, right? I would give it to vegans. Mm -hmm. Right. So my I don't know even how to start. So um, my issue with veganism is that. It's assuming a lot about the animals, right? So, and it's doing it. I also think veganism actually has most most vegan activists, the most popular ones at least, have kind of ruined animal rights activism. I think they have done animals a huge disservice, and have and I think vegan activists have actually caused more suffering for animals. That rather than reducing pain and misery. Sorry, am I, uh, but but uh, uh, the reason for that is I think that they are 
they they're assuming that they're focusing on the killing part mm-hmm. rather than the reducing misery part mm. and th- there's two two problems with that um one is that um the animals most animals are not self aware do you agree with that depends what you mean by self aware so not just they're not self aware they're not i think there's a there's another word for when you're also not just self aware but you're also aware of your self awareness do you know what that's called uh i i think i know what you're getting at but, right. but i i agree with you and i think most vegans would that animals don't have the same kind of self awareness that self-aware. we do. they don't so, know what's going to happen to so them they don't have hopes for their future in the right, same right. sense you know? so animal That's fine. so i understand that self awareness is not just a like black and white thing there's right. a spectrum to it right uh-huh. but when it comes to the most advanced version of it which is the uh, advanced is the wrong word i guess because it's not like evolution makes you yeah you know, but the the ones that you are so self aware i don't know if i'm using the right terminology that you're also aware of your self awareness i think there's very that's a very unique thing to have like there's not that many animals that have that right, right. i think it's just humans maybe elephants dolphins whale um chimpanzees what else crows the, right the, the thing so so that that's fine but the the point yeah. that i would make to to avoid unnecessarily going down a rabbit hole is that i would agree with you that non-human animals which by the way is an interesting point to make you've been referring to animals we are animals it's an interesting concept of our language that we refer to all non-human animals as animals right kind of um no i don't I that's part of the but y- you notice how it's like it's a subconscious thing but i didn't do that did i i can't i consider us as I, we said i said we are one of the only animal one of the few animals that is self-aware like it's very unique sure but you can also talk about like um like you talk about like animal rights or, or uh, when when you say animal rights if if animal rights sh- should be a, a, a terminologically consistent uh phrase right. then animal rights should encompass human rights yeah we should. which is which is strange um it's it's something singer points out in, in the very first pages of animal liberation he says how strange is it that we will call both an oyster and a chimpanzee animals but we'll create a massive gulf in between the chimpanzee and, and ourselves. It's very, very well, if strange. If I was a vegan activist, I would say it's kind of like the Black Lives Matters uh, argument because, like, well, yeah, we see people when if say if somebody says, well, all lives matter, are like, yeah, but these are the ones that we're focusing on because we think they are the ones that are not paying sure, attention. Sure, but I, I, don't so think, animal I don't think that's analogous here. I think, well, and and if if I if I consider myself an animal rights activist, I'm like, yeah. well, then why are you not talking about humans? It's like, well, because most i'm focusing on animals that cannot speak for themselves Mm -hmm. right so yeah like i'm an animal rights activist but these animals the human animals are doing a good job when you you campaign for the for the secularization of iran that's speaking on behalf of animals who can't speak for themselves as well right but i'm not okay i'm saying if i was an animal rights activist right Mm -hmm. right so if i was an animal rights activist and somebody came to me i'm like why are you not then defending human rights why are you focusing on all and all animals except humans i'm not an animal rights activist right right? because but i would say the analogy would be doing it the other way around and saying having a movement called all lives matter but just focusing on black lives you'd be like well why aren't you focusing on other lives right i see see. it should be the other way it should be the other way around i've got no problem with people saying so is there a word for non-human animals maybe that's why they don't have it well that's the thing it's it's not it's not in our language and and the reason for that if you think about why is that the case well it, it shows that human exceptionalism the idea that we are distinct and special is is ingrained into our philosophy and our very language and language what, is the I mean, is it, the but, is the bull with which we play philosophy so but how could it's very we difficult na- to but, navigate but but wouldn't we feel like special about every group that we're in like don't you feel like i mean this is i mean i'm not i'm not excusing it but i'm just saying it's obviously like i feel um more special about i don't know my family members yeah there's no there's no problem with that but but if i say like uh we we don't have a word right that refers to other people or or other things of the same type that we don't include ourselves in for some reason most of the time when we use right right, right, right. it's not like we would say we wouldn't say we wouldn't have a word for all countries that aren't our country. We might say foreigner, but that's a different concept. Yeah, but we don't have that word for animals that are not human either. And yeah. that maybe that's why we're stuck with animal rights, right? Yeah. But, but but like, you know, I, I don't have a problem with people calling yeah. it animal yeah. rights. It's like, call it what you want as long as you're not eating them. You know, right. that's fine. Okay, but me. so let me get back to the point I was trying yeah, to make. Because, because a lot of people might think that when I say that um, most animals are not self-aware, mm-hmm. 
or or at least they're not very self-aware and they 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 keep pointing out most vegans that i talk to like no uh, they're intelligent and like it's not the same thing that's not the same thing yeah uh, it could be extremely intelligent and not self-aware and some like i think animals might be i don't know if i think they are um, might be more self-aware like i think pigs are extremely intelligent right mm -hmm. about as much as dogs is the common right. thing to bring up but but i don't know how smart elephants are but pigs might be more in, more mm -hmm. intelligent than elephants but elephants are self-aware and pigs are not right um so so the thing is the problem is with the to defend the rights of animals for them not to be killed for animals that are not self-aware to me makes no sense to me because you're defending something that they do not even know they have so what right? vegans care about is not self-awareness mm -hmm. or at least um what i think the philosophically consistent vegans do the, the veganism that i subscribe to right a lot of people have different definitions of veganism some people see it as a diet i certainly don't my definition of veganism and i've checked this with people like peter singer and uh, popular youtube um, vegan activists like Earthling Ed, and we, we more or less agree that veganism is a philosophical stance, right. which is simply the minimization of unnecessary suffering. Yes. That's what veganism is. Right. right. So for me, veganism isn't like a thing on its own. It's part of just a wider philosophy of minimizing suffering. The reason why I don't eat animals is the same reason why I don't rape people. It's like it's all part of one umbrella philosophy. Right. Veganism is just a natural derivative of it. So when it comes to, to self-awareness, I don't particularly care. What I'm interested in is can an animal feel pain? And right. It, and if it can, then we should minimize it to the to, to the highest extent possible. That's the right. argument. And that's why I think that vegans have increased the pain rather than re reduce it. So, so do you agree that if I if we could kill animals in a way that they mm, that they did not feel any suf that did not suffer, right? So. So the reason why self-awareness is important is because if an animal is aware of its own existence, mm -hmm. then by killing it, you have taken away something from it that it knew it had. Well, right? not, not, right. not, not really, right? Because, but, and this, this actually helps your point because, um, or maybe, no, maybe it doesn't actually. Like, so if you, so like take a human being who mm -hmm. has self-awareness. Let's, let's say there's a human being who isn't close with family members or friends or anything like that, lives, lives a purely solitary existence. I mean, right. they've got a job and stuff. They're not some hermit, but they, they, nobody really cares about them. If they died, no one would miss them, right? That mm -hmm. kind of person. And someone comes along and shoots them in the back of the head and mm -hmm. they have no idea it's coming and they don't feel anything and they're just taken from existence in that second. Right. You could say the exact same thing about that N situation. No, because that person was self-aware. No, that, that, that's what I mean. Like you're saying, you're saying if, if, uh, if something's self-aware, then it's wrong to take something away from them because they right. had something to do. You're not actually taking anything away from them. Why not? Right, because the, the life that they were about to lead is just potentiality. It's just potential life. And that has no intrinsic worth of its own accord. To, to us, well, it doesn't have to have intrinsic value. It has value to that person. It does have value to that person, but right. it's not going to be a problem if you take it away because they're not going to be around to suffer from it being taken it's away. An, it's a, up, it's a, it's, you take it away... Um, future pleasure future experience same same thing's true when you have the morning after pill right but but, but just just saying that this thing is going to go on to become something that experiences good things is not a good enough argument to say let's let's well, keep it alive but the thing is that okay so actually with I, this is going to make you sound insane but the more the, the, there might be an argument for why you would want to create the most number of conscious beings that could experience the most amount of pleasure and that would be the best thing to do for for but but the, the problem with that is that we don't have the resources and the higher yeah know, i think it's more about minimizing pain than it is about maximizing yeah. pleasure right right so well actually isn't that well, the and there that's all, the same thing n it depends how you're defining your terms but yes it is but like in, in the way we're thinking about it right so the way to maximize pleasure there are two ways to think about this either let's say we have a society do we want to do we want it to be the most pleasure that there is so do we right. want like do we want um a thousand people all who have 80 points of pleasure right that's that's a lot of pleasure that's a lot of a lot of pleasure points or do right. we want 50 people who all have 90 points right so there's less pleasure in the system but the average pleasure is higher like so, what are we going so for? there's a tipping point right there's a tipping point where you get to the 
you know the optimal place where now this is the maximum amount of pleasure and then after that if they increase the population it starts going down it's like a kind of laffa curve or something yes, like yes but yes, I, yes. I don't think i don't think that it makes yeah. sense to think about pleasure just in terms of like numerical value i think we need to think right. about the averages as well okay but even even if you don't take about don't think about future pleasure yeah you already talk, taken away something at the present from that person something that they had and appreciated that they have in the present okay but that's what you do to animals who aren't self-aware no because they have no awareness that they are yeah, but they, 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 they have they have their like pleasure they have their pleasurable existence right their experience thanks to the meat industry no they wouldn't no, even no, exist no, 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 they no, wouldn't no. even exist <laughs> no, 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 no. no okay so i'm talking here no, about, but, but let me make this point i'm for talking people. here about a wild pig okay okay i'd rather be dead than a pig on a factory farm you and I, you would too if you knew anything about what goes okay. on the factory farms. Okay, so this is the point that I'm trying to make. Okay, mm-hmm. so for, let's let's make it more right. So, if if a pig is experiencing any, let's say let's say we create, uh, let's say we have a place where we we're treating animals humanely yeah. and killing them humanely. Sure. And this is the point. <laughs> this, interesting, interesting phrase: killing them humanely. I know what right. you mean, but but think about. Well, just, what's a better word? Think, think think about if you were applying it to humans. It's like we're going to set up a system where we where we kill Jews humanely. It's like what's the problem with that? So okay. is, is the problem with that just the fact that it's that it's uh, based on a kind of ethno religious discrimination, or is the problem also that you're but, taking their lives away? Okay, so it's the, like well, I'm killing the, them humanely. The diff- Let me tell you, that the, seems to be a contradiction in terms in many ways. Well, no. Okay, so if humans, okay, it, you if humans didn't have. So this is what I think, right? I think it would be okay to kill humans and eat them if it didn't create such an um, such a, a, the level of trauma uh-huh. and social distress that you would get from killing humans and eat, eating them. Yeah. I think it would have solved a lot of... And also if it didn't cause disease... I think I heard it's bad for you to eat human meat. Is that correct? I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's, yeah. The, it, the jury's so, out, but so, yes, most okay. people think so. So if human meat was healthy... Mm-hmm. And if people weren't so grossed out by eating human meat, mm-hmm. and if we like the, the policy of once you re- reach a certain age, then we're going to kill you and feed you to other people, um, and if if that idea wasn't wouldn't cause this amount of you know trauma uh, to to the society yeah. and make people feel sec- uh, insecure and understood all, all the time, if this if this if it wouldn't like destroy the fabric of our society if something like this uh-huh. then it might have been the w- best thing to do for a society if i would think but the thing is that what i'm what i'm saying to animals the animals are not uh, thinking so like kill them if if you want to kill them and and them experiencing no trauma then fine but no. that's that's see, not see, what's happening in so so farms. yeah okay so d- let's we have to talk we can't just examine many things at the same time mm-hmm. right so we have to ex- like i'm tr- we're trying to experience uh, examine whether the killing is the problem or the way they're being killed is the problem right i, so, I so, don't i don't necessarily think it's either i think it's it's partly the way they're being killed rather than them being killed right but mostly it's the way that they're treated while they're alive so exactly so yeah. if we separate so there's three things thank you for saying that the way they're treated when they're being alive the way they are killed Okay, or the act of killing at all yeah. in general. So I can't, we can't argue all these th- three things at the same time. So sometimes we need to come up with hypothetical situations mm-hmm. to separate these things, right? So the reason why I'm saying to, to be able to separate these, I'm, I'm asking, if we raise a pig specifically for the for eating it, right? Yeah. And this pig experiences some joy and you know eats grass, has sex, enjoys life for a while, and then we kill it in a way that it doesn't suffer any pain and then we eat it mm-hmm. okay is there anything wrong with that like i know there's the others that's not the situation in many places but is there anything wrong with this i don't have a big problem with that no no okay I, the only problem i have with that is that it it doesn't help with the narrative that i'm trying to get rid of that animals are there for our use i want to kind of remove that uh, that philosophical conception from people's minds and that might have but, a really adverse effect on that but like apart but, from that but, kind of thing right. in terms of the intrinsic uh pleasures and pains of that life and that act no that's fine but it's interesting you say that because i thought you wanted aren't you trying to be like logically like you're saying that you're going for the narrative that sells this whether it makes logical sense or not like you're saying the problem that you have with it that it hurts the narrative right but isn't that does that matter no, what I'm saying is that by 
if if we have a society of people who are under the impression that animals are there for our use and consumption, it leads itself to more exploitation because people don't have the the philosophical outlook to think that I should treat these animals uh, how how they deserve to be treated. Well, okay, that's very interesting. Because that's a, that's a problem I have with the vegan uh, movement because most you're saying something that most vegans like you, you'll notice even then just then I I used the term animals. Right. That's because um, that that's because of the fact that I've been kind of sold this idea that animals are there for our consumption that animals are this big group that are, that are just there for us humans who are a separate being. Right. Like it's it's ingrained even within me and it's like that's not done very much for for my veganism that hasn't helped right. me to, to move towards a, a, an ethically I, pure I don't know life if i even feel like that i feel like humans just were managed to take over and they're just using nature it, it's not like it was created i don't think for us or anything it was there for us i don't think that I ever felt like that, right? but, is, but, uh, but humans humans shouldn't be at the top of the food chain, right? It, it, w- right. When when uh, this is something Yuval Noah Harai points out quite well. Okay. When uh, when like lions became the top of the food chain, right? Mm-hmm. A few hundred thousand years ago, they're the top top of the food chain, whatever it is, or, or some animal at the top of the food chain, whatever you pick. That was a process of long and gradual evolution. So as the lions got stronger, the gazelles got faster. Nature kind of balanced itself out. So the right. lion was the top of the food chain, but the ecosystem was balanced because although they they got the, the they got the pick, the gazelles could also more or less escape kind of half and half. It was like they're gonna they're gonna get their prey, but the prey is gonna survive, and it's all balanced out. Right. Humans jumped to the top of the food tra- food chain in, so, in like in like the space like within the last ten thousand years. That that's unprecedented. So and isn't because, that the appeal to nature fallacy? No. What I'm saying is that. Uh, Although when we became the top of the food chain, nature didn't balance itself out in the same way. Mm. So if you're talking about how it's just we've just become powerful beings and we're just using nature as any other animal I wasn't would, justifying it. I'm just like, saying I wasn't justifying no, but it. I know you're not, but it's, yeah. it's an interesting point to, to consider. It's right. like people will often think right. that uh, that's all we're kind of doing. We're doing what any other animal would have done at the top of the food chain. That's not true. We got there so unnaturally, oh. and nature hasn't balanced itself out. We have the capability to completely destroy the ecosystem, I wasn't, unlike anything else. In right, history. but I wasn't saying it was natural, not unnatural. I was just saying this is what happened, which it did. Was what happened, right? It's not like anything. The nature is like here's a well, gift. It, it's to not. You. It's not as simple as. It's not as simple as we just kind of naturally rose to the top I and didn't started say, using animals. You know. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I didn't say like it was. I'm just saying I I didn't ever feel like nature came like here's a gift to you humans yeah, right no, no I agree with you I just yeah. it was like more of like let's just take this well this helps to elucidate that point what, right. what we've done is not naturally got to the top of the food chain justifiably we've just set up a system of but exploitation natu- naturally justifiably like I mean you're you're making it sound like there's some naturally nat- or justifiably n- okay it's it's like it's neither like, right. so but, so don't make it yeah. built to nature because it's yeah. not true and it's not and it's not but but that, but I mean we don't care if it's natural or not the thing is if it were natural is what i'm saying then we'd be at the top of the food chain but nature will have balanced itself out right and and it wouldn't be as bad what i'm saying is that it's it's more bad than just some animal that's naturally got to the top of the food chain and is now exploiting the rest of the animal kingdom because we have just we have based our entire rise to the top of the food chain on the exploitation of other animals and that necessitates a philosophy that we're separate and better than them Mm. and that's something that i'm kind of trying to get rid of at least the better than bit like let's well you can you can think that we're better than non-human animals and you can think that we're more advanced more superior that we're at the top or whatever but you shouldn't be of the opinion that because of that we're able to exploit them in the yeah, world. Yeah, I never, I, I never make that argument. No, I know you yeah, don't, but yeah. I, it's just a I point never under, Yeah, and and also a lot of a lot of people that are against that's another argument. You're right. That it's a, another argument um, anti-vegans make that I never, I don't agree with. People like, well, we're superior, so we get to do this. I'm like, okay, so. I mean, ba- based on that argument, I'm superior to your child. I was going to say that, yeah. Like so, Richard because Dawkins I'm smar- is superior to me. I'm smarter than your kid, so yeah. hand it over. <laughs> it's, really, it's, it's like people say, if you were on a desert island, would you eat a pig? It's like, yeah, but if I was on a desert island with an elderly person, I'd probably eat the elderly person. That right. doesn't mean I'm going to like set up a factory farm with elderly pers- people in the real world. Right. That's an issue of necessity. That's the whole point of the vegan argument. It's right, like right. only cause but, suffering but you're when making, it's necessary. But you're making a different point than most vegans that I talk to because most vegans are... Think no killing animals in their abs- you know. Yeah, well, so, I'm I'm not most vegans. Yeah, I don't I don't do yoga so I, for a start. And I, yeah. <laughs> no, but I just want to point out that difference yeah. because you're saying that if you ki- kill it in a way that doesn't produce any suffering mm-hmm. at all, um, in fact, not only 
not only you're not causing suffering, the fact that you're eating meat in that situation introduced pleasure to that animal. Yeah, exactly. Because it, and that animal would then have... And it introduced pleasure to the human being. So yeah, yeah that's a good thing to do. So we're, okay. we're in agreement on, okay, on, on the action of killing oh. an animal. It's like, But it, the, the thing to note is that it applies the same to humans, if you want to be consistent. To, to agree with that, if you want to... If you want to Not really. Because the difference is that if I... Ki- okay, so f- for example, I'm against taking... So if, a, if you kill... If you take away a, a, you know, a, cow, a cow's child away from it, right? Yeah. So and you kill the child, which, uh, which by the way is exactly what happens. Yes, in the dairy industry. right, right, yeah. right. So there, uh, that's that's a that should be a crime in my opinion mm-hmm. because even if the if the baby cow is not aware of its own existence, yeah, the mother is aware of its existence. Yeah. So right, so you're 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 causing harm and suffering to the mom. Yeah. Right. So you shouldn't do that. Okay. So but, but, so we shouldn't have milk. But let me let me make a, I, yeah I don't have milk. But let me make my let me make my point. But um. The the point that I'm okay. Well, let, let me let me make my point before you interrupt me. Okay, <laughs> the point I'm saying is that the reason why a cow that wouldn't I'm, be, I'm I'm sorry for interrupting you. I just <laughs> just so you know, I just want to say I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. No, it's okay. Just, <laughs> you just interrupt me. Yeah, no, that's but, the that's, that's the, the joke. R slash whoosh. Hey. No, okay. Uh, I got the joke, but I ruined it by explaining it. Mm. Um, yeah, a, a joke is like a, a frog. If you dissect it, it dies. Yeah, I re- so you, you get it because obviously, if you uh, if you if you if you dissect a frog, it means that you have to and you're you have to rip it, right now, yeah. you have to rip it apart, <laughs> and, and then it then it dies. Okay, thank but obviously, you. I'm against that as as, as a yeah. vegan. Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> unless you killed it painlessly. Oh my god! All right, let's get back. Let's on the back <laughs> of the head. <laughs> okay, but okay, so similar to that, if mm-hmm. I, if you, you the, the the same standard does not apply to humans. Okay. The reason is that if I kill, if I take away a child away from its mother, only the mom will notice it. Other cows are not going to be like coming together and be like, what kind of society we live in yeah. that they do this to our baby cows. This is horrible. It caused depression. I totally like, agree. It's, it's like, well, like, yeah, but my, I know, you know, but let me make this point for our audience. Like the cows are not going to be like, it seems like our lives are meaningless. We're, it seems like we're just being used. We're slaves here. No, if, if a cow is just being able to fuck and eat and enjoy a life and it's killed at the end of the day, it's not going to notice that it's like it's not going to f- have this crisis of, a, you know, meaning and purpose and all of this. If you do that in a human society, right, if you say go and like, well, your babies, uh, ba- you know, chi- children under three, I think under three, I think they're not self-aware, right? It, it depends who you ask, really. It's, right. It's, so if you go and kill babies and eat them, you're gonna cr- create a more a panic in but, society, and you're going to cause a lot of harm. Uh, and you know, so it does. It so does so this, this is all true, but I think you misunderstand the comparison I'm making. Okay, when I say the same is true of humans, I mean under the same circumstances. So take a so take a human being who isn't going to have that effect. That's why I, that's why in the example I gave earlier, I specified that the person has no social connections because obviously. If you take a, a human child away from its mum and people find out, that's going to cause huge societal implications. Right. But if you could somehow steal and kill a child from its mother without anybody else finding out. And the, without the, the mother? The only person who knows about it is the mother. Mm-hmm. Right. Let's say she's like uh, she, she's dumb and deaf or something, that dumb, dumb, deaf and blind or whatever it is. She knows that her child has been taken away and you've taken it away and you've slaughtered it. Uh, and no one's ever going to be able to find out because the mother can't say anything. Well, the mother is suffering in the situation. Yeah. And the, and the mother cow suffers in that situation. But can't right. tell the others. So, yeah, so it is well, comparable. I, yeah, okay, that is. No, you were. Okay, so I'm saying that's why you shouldn't take the cow, b- b- baby away yeah. from the mother as well. But in the situation where you're killing the pig, mm-hmm. adult pig, yeah. Uh, that's not comparable to a human situation. Yeah, so, but so, so my point was that it is comparable to a human situation if you take a, a human being who nobody else knows, nobody else is going to miss, and you kill them painlessly. And, and as we said a minute ago, we both agreed that that's fine. Well, I didn't agree. Oh, no, we didn't agree, did we? Sorry, that's, yeah. that's my fault. But there, but the thing is, it surely that has to be the case. If you're going to say that the reason it's okay to kill the pig is because it's just going to die, it's lived a life of pleasure, and no one else is going to know, it's not going to cause societal panic. But, then if I can do the same thing to a human, it well, should be fine as well. Well, the problem with that is that if we allow that, mm-hmm. then we are, in, like, we we live in a world that we allow that, that that cause constant panic. All right, but I'm, I'm just talking about one instance of this happening, just yeah, one human being being killed. Yeah, but... We still want to live in a world that does not allow that, even if, like, we want to condemn that, even if somebody gets away with it 
and other people don't notice it for practical reasons we want to condemn that because we don't want to live in a world where we say that's okay do you know what i mean thing is that that so, that's that gets complicated because i would say that so would a pig if it understood what was going on and i know it doesn't but neither do children or the disabled but they are still part of the moral calculation that we no, make if other humans uh, if we came out and say like hey if you manage to kill somebody that is a loner and nobody was going to miss in a, in a back alley it, without causing pain if we come out and say like okay we're going to allow we're going to say that's okay oh no no right? but we're not talking about like letting people know that this is okay nope. and we're doing this i'm talking about no but if no we one's just, finding out if we if we would define morality in a yeah. way that that's okay the consequences of that to a society is like what the fuck right why, why? what's the problem well, yeah but it's not it's not going to cause panic it's not going to cause suffering it's good. Well, yeah, but this is. I'm just talking no, about. No, the, no I'm talking about, about the realistic expectation of I. Ha, I know I have of our fellow human beings of this species of animals. They they might they're not going to think about it the way you're thinking about it. They are going to have a. Um, they're going to panic. They're no, going to no, have a reaction. They're not. They're not going to find out. They don't know. Again, to to be okay, so to be comparable to make the comparison with the pig. Yeah, you have to no, say no, that the other gonna, humans don't even find out about. They're this. not going to find out about the killing. Or, or that it's okay. They, they don't understand any of that. Okay, so what, what are we talking about? Because we're talking about introducing moral standards to no, society. No, I'm talking... You're talking, about, talking, you're talking no. about introducing moral standards just in a, in a private room just between you and me. I'm not telling you society. I'm, what, yeah, what, that's, what, that's what I'm talking about. So I'm, I'm talking about... I'm not talking about what, what's it moral to let people know is moral. I'm talking about what's moral on a surface level. The, the whole point of coming up with moral standards is to... I mean is to introduce moral standards to society that not, work, that, make, that increases pleasure and reduces suffering. In philosophy, right. morality is about trying to find ethical truths, if there are such a yeah, thing. Yeah, but what's the point of finding ethical truths? The point, whole point of finding ethical truths is, is to introduce standards to society mm. where it increases... Maybe it is for you. Okay. But well, it's like, it's like I could, we could talk about, we could argue about what the truth... Of, it's like if we're trying to argue about the question, what are the nuclear codes, right? What are the nuclear codes in this country? And we could argue, and I could say... These, I think, are the nuclear codes, and you go, well, no, that can't be true because if we introduce that into society, then it would cause disaster. It's like well, th that's not that's okay. not what we're talking about. We're talking about what's what's true, if, if whether or not people find out about it. Right. So for me, morality there's like there is no mor morality is something we define. Okay. I know you probably disagree with this. It's not like something that is true, as in the sense of that mathematical formulas are true. Okay. Morality is something that we get together and we decide this is how we're going to define it and we're going to try to define it in a way that if you follow it, it's going to cause the maximum amount of pleasure or reduce um, reduce misery, yeah. right? And what I'm saying is that if we if we go by that standard, right, if me me and you agreeing that this is moral or not, that's not good. if we go to society and say like hey it's the reason why we don't we say that for pigs why it's okay and we not we don't say that for humans is okay because if we go to society and we're like hey from tonight from today if you can find a homeless person that nobody's going to miss and you can shoot them in the back in the back alley without anybody seeing them and if you kill them without pain that's a okay the consequences to that to our society is different than if you allow that hey if you kill pigs in a way that they do not suffer yeah, and, and eat them that's not that's not the right comparison to be making because to, to compare the situations right to make them identical which is what we want to do to under, to try and get a kind of the point of making this comparison is to try and put ourselves in the pig's shoes in, in, in a sense by comparing right. it to humanity the, the comparison is not killing a homeless person and letting humans know that it's moral to do that and killing a pig and letting humans know it's moral to do that the difference is killing a homeless person and letting human beings know that that's okay to do and okay. killing a pig and the other pigs somehow know that that's the thing that's happening that would cause panic now as you say pigs don't feel that panic right. so the true comparison is when a homeless person is killed but the people don't find out that it's moral to do that okay so let's make the comparison and, and if that's the case then then you have to you're committed based on the morality that you say about killing the animal you're committed to saying that it's not wrong to go and murder that homeless person so if no one finds the, out the, about the, it the, the reason the, the difference between my example and your example is that i don't see a point in coming up with a moral argument that we're just going to keep to ourselves right when i come up with moral def defining moral uh, and morality and what's moral and what's not is to is to, for the perp for the, the point of that is to give it to give a you know guide to society to follow like I, 
you know so okay but so so look this is actually and that's why it will by that method but but with that reasoning the whole point of it is to tell it to the whole society you know what i mean so they would find out okay i'm I'm willing to grant this because this is actually something of a detour because i was just making this point about humans that the 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 important point is that we both agree that it's okay to kill an animal in that circumstance a non-human animal in that in that circumstance whether or not that also applies to humans is is kind of an irrelevant yeah let me just want to make one last point about this to make the comparison more more you know, more equal. The, I mean, if if I was asked, if I was asked that, would you rather never exist, or exist for a while, and then be killed and become someone's food? Mm-hmm. I would go with, I I'll take the latter. I'll take living for a while, and mm-hmm. then by, as by some age, you kill me and become someone's food. Yeah, the, sure. Yeah. Okay. So the thing is that a lot of vegans that are against killing completely, they just as, they just assume that the cows would decide that never exists, right? Like, you know, they're like well, no, if killing, they say if murder is bad, it should be murder. It should be bad for everybody. Yeah, but it's not. It's so it shouldn't be about the killing. And I actually don't right. think for most vegans it even is. I it think I think is. a lot of vegans are of the opinion that you shouldn't kill, that you shouldn't take life without okay, it. But okay. I don't think that's the main point of their concern. Okay, you don't see vegans practically advocating for farmer when they when they go and protest a farmer they don't say this is awful that you're that you're killing this animal they say this is awful that you're torturing and slaughtering this animal it's, yeah but it's then not, if you it's talk not to just about the ending of its life but actually if you talk to them and they say like okay so would you be okay with killing them in a way most vegans that i've talked to maybe mm-hmm. maybe my sample size is not not random enough right but most vegans i talk to they say like okay what if we killed them without suffering and they were they were raised in good conditions that would kill them without suffering yeah. they would say no that's always wrong because murder is murder you know if it's wrong to kill humans it's wrong to kill animals that's what they would say well i can't i can't speak for anybody right. other than myself but okay, okay. if you want to have a moral principle you should stick by it my moral principle is nope. we have to minimize unnecessary suffering i agree I right agree. so if you come up with a circumstance that maximizes pleasure that that doesn't cause suffering then okay. i'm committed to saying that that's fine so this is how uh, i okay so when if you look at it, let's let's treat animals uh, humans as a, another like let, let's do what you're saying right so look at humans as as just one uh, if if you look at the way we treat other animals compared to humans right mm. is that we notice what they respond to like we know that if this happens you know wolves react like this most of them you look you study animal behavior right this species of bird like the cuckoo bird seems to be like different from other birds like oh they leave their eggs in other birds like you could see like there's patterns right so we look at humans as as and you study human behavior i think what you are expecting from humans is is not is unrealistic okay so you live a life the way the way you live you want to be logically consistent and you're like well if this is this this and this and this is true then i have to live my life like this right but but you do not represent most humans okay this is very the way that you are so committed to having a logically consistent life is is not representative of how other humans live right so if you if you want to treat humans just like other animals what i think the vegans have done is that they have gone with trying to advocate that there is nothing not anything short of not eating meat giving up on meat or giving up of any animal products is not good enough yeah right? correct and because they have done that they have made a lot of people that I most a lot of hum, humans are not going to give up on meat. They're not. Yeah, they okay? will. Well, they will. They will. Once we, the only way they will is when we get meat replacements, right? But hold on. I, I, the thing is that this is my which, which we already have. Yeah. So which once it becomes economically cheap, which it already is in many places, and once people take, once take people in, real in meat. Those, once those once people in those places. Uh, commit to that then it will become economically viable in other places as well great but okay so before that before that happened but a lot of people with the messaging was you need to stop eating me and 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 i understand this is illogical but people are like but i really like my steak okay Mm -hmm. and most people are too selfish to give up to care more to care about suffering uh, of and of other animals more than they care about the taste of their steak yeah right so because of that i think a lot of people 
because animal rights activism has been taken over by veganism, a lot of people have given up on animal rights in general. Mm-hmm. And I think if all the time, if all the resources and time and energy that was spent on and marketing that was spent on telling people to give up on their meat, if it was spent on let's make the conditions for animal better. I know there are many people that are already doing that, but I think a lot of people think animal rights activism, they think of veganism. And a lot of people yeah. are scared and you know, don't want to do anything. Do anything. They, they don't want to talk to vegans. They think vegans are aggressive. They don't want to um, hear what vegans have to say. They, mm-hmm. they, they const- so I, I'm not saying any of that is justified or reasonable. But I, I just think like because they've, because they, they've been introduced to the idea that the message is give up on your meat, animal rights activism as a whole has been yeah, dismissed. So there, there are two, there are two yeah. points to make. The first is that you're making a practical point. Right? Look, right. I'm not a I'm not an activist, at least not yet. Uh, it depends how you how you define activism, but I'm just doing philosophy. Right. I I have become convinced that if there's such thing as moral truth, then it's morally true that that the current consumption of animal products by human beings is one of the most ethically embarrassing parts of our society. Okay. That I believe to be true, and and if it's if it's unhelpful or, or unwise for me to say that, then so be it. But it doesn't affect the truth of what I'm saying. Right. No, you said that you want to reduce, do whatever it takes to reduce misery as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Right? So what I'm saying is that... There's a better practical know, cause to pr- get there. Right? Yes. And, and that's not taking an abolition, uh, abolitionist stance. Right. I understand that. But the thing is, I, I also think that you're thinking too lowly of human beings. And also, I think, I think that you could say the exact same thing. Have you met them? You could say, well, uh, the thing is, you could say the exact same thing about uh, the abolition of slavery. You could say that yep. you were expecting too much of yeah, people. It would have been better to say, it would have been better in, in, the, in the, if you were I living. I would say that about abolition. Yeah, but if, if I were living in the 18th century, mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to be putting out pamphlets that said, hey, you know, let's improve the living quarters for the slaves. Mm-hmm. No, I'd say this needs to end now, and here's why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the, and if in, you don't believe me, then I will sit with you for as long as it takes to help you to understand why so, I think that it's wrong. Yeah, but y- y- you picked a time where it was a good time to start, you know, fighting for ending it, right? Well, but, not, no, not but the, not no, the, no, no, actually, that's a good example. Not, that's good. Not the 18th well, okay, but that's a good example. Let's go back. Um, let's go back one thousand years before that. Yeah. Sure. Right. Uh, let's go back at a time that you okay that there's if you advocated for that you would there was zero chance of success yeah but that's not where we are no. in society right now when it comes to well let me make me, let me make a point would it, in that if you were in a, at a time where mm-hmm. it was zero chance of success to get rid of slavery yeah wouldn't and if you could have gotten success for improving living conditions but if nobody would listen to, and you, you were let, let's say you were some rich person that uh, and people respected right mm-hmm. and people listened to right and if you came out and said like we need to get rid of slavery people would be like this guy lost his mind and they would stop listening to you but if you said like hey we need to trade treat them better and then people would listen to you yeah. but wouldn't you wouldn't that take you know the message of like we need to get rid of slavery you know maybe come at the cost as a, something that you could have maybe yeah. changed? If, if we can be certain that it really would be better for me to, to not advocate that, then sure. But mm-hmm. I genuinely believe that society today, mm-hmm. at the time we're living at, and the, and the way that people are thinking about this, is ready for people to come along and say, let's end this now. And you know what? The proof of that is in the pudding, mm-hmm. in the vegan pudding, because people are going vegan in droves. Right. Like, this is unprecedented. This This is... The, like it's 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 still obviously a, a small number of it's people in small. comparison to the world population, right. but in the areas where it matters, which are the which are the the most kind of economically dominant areas, right. which are going to kind of send shockwaves th- through the rest of the world, people are going vegan in droves. Right, but don't you think it's the it's the right time to jump upon that bandwagon and say let's show people why this is the right thing to do? Yeah, but I would I would argue that it would have been even today. So the reason why the growth is really high is because you're looking at such a small number and then when if you mm-hmm. going from a very low percentage to another low higher but still very low percentage looks yeah. like a astronaut it looks like it's growing by a very um high you know 
growth rate, right? But you're dealing with very small numbers. That's why the growth rate looks so so high. But yeah. I'm just saying the the I think like even though even to this day still the vegans are ex, still the minority, right? But I would I would bet that the majority of people, right? The majority of people, not just today, even from you know ten years ago, fifty years ago, one hundred years ago, right? I think it would be so easy if all of this movement, if if majority of people would have been jumped on the bandwagon easily of you telling them that let's treat animals better. Let's, but then the thing let, is, the thing but, is, I mean, that's already being done. No, no. But I'm just saying that you, yes, it's been already been done and with good results. And I don't, and and I don't no, think no. it's been infiltrated in the way that you're in, in the way that you're it, talking about. There's a lot of new laws, better, the better standards of the way that they kill animals because of that activism. I'm just saying, if the people that were, if the people that were asking people, uh, others to eat and stop giving meat, if they were all this pressure was on better living condition mm -hmm. right if we especially like think how popular this is, is anti anti big corporates right instead of even asking people to change their behavior you could have created boogeymans like mcdonald's or kfc and be like we need to you know pressure these big corporations for them not to buy meat from these places and these things have worked these things have really moved the needle. Like I think getting a thousand other per people, right, to stop eating meat is going to be significantly less. Uh, the impact of that is significantly less on the on the on animals than getting one politician to pass one law on living conditions on on uh, you know on uh, animal you know on you're farms. Beginning, you're stuff. beginning to sound like an Islamic reform. Uh, no, the difference between that actually, I I, I was I, I know that people say that because the difference between that I would have been for Islamic reform if it was actually a step in the middle, like if it was yeah. something between atheism and being Islamic fundamentalism uh, and Islamic fundamentalist. What Islamic reform does is actually protects Islam as an ideology yeah, and keeps Armin, it. But Armin, look what 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 animal what what improving the the the. It, 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 it is a necessary requirement of improving the uh, captivity conditions of animals for animals to be in captivity. So in the same way that, yes, Islamic reform keeps keeps the Islam, you know, mm. like so, but, but animal reform keeps the animals, keeps them in cases, no, keeps no, them but in I would, But just like we agreed on, if we, if we completely get rid of the suffering, if we keep the killing, we're fine. Yeah, but that, that can't be done. Why can't it be done? Like, what, look, farmers aren't farmers aren't just sadists, right? They, they they don't just enjoy torturing and 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 killing animals. They yeah. they have to keep them in tiny cages. They have to they have to put them through machinery because that's the only economically viable model. When you hear about free <coughs> range and things, right. it's a total myth. These things can't actually exist and hold up with the economic demand. So they if you if you for and the world, the world population is only getting bigger, so the cages are only going to get smaller. Right. So yeah, but if you force, okay, well then you get what you want by force. If we, if we have but, the power to force a company to make their cages bigger, right? We can force a company to open the cages. But why would you need to? Op if you can, if you can force the companies to have bigger cages or not, no cages. You know, why would you want to stop the killing? Or aren't you already at the place you were comfortable with? If I, if we could get the companies to make sure that the animals are not being suffered are not experiencing suffering you, you can't you could that that's what you can't do you why can, not you can make the suffering less by giving them a little bit more room in their cage right but they're still in a cage no but if okay so hypothetically if we get to a place where we can still eat meat and the animals are not suffering is that not a good place to be if the animals aren't suffering then yeah do 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 anything you okay. like do anything you like if there's no suffering involved. Right, right, I, right. I, I do not care what you do if there's no suffering You're saying involved. it's impossible to do that? Not possible, to keep up with so the economic if, demand. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise, it wouldn't be happening. Okay, right? if the economical demand is something that would make this impossible to do, then why do you think that the economical demand would... It's also a barrier for this to completely go away. Like I understand, it's it's a uniquely economic moral emergency. The only the, so, so when you want to stop like racism, right, slavery, there are so many intricate reasons why uh, racism exists, right? I'm not necessarily trying to get rid of the. I am ultimately, but the, the, it's not my focal concern to get rid of speciesism, as right. as someone like Singer would define it. My principal concern is getting rid of animal suffering, right? And unlike something like racism. Mm. Unlike cancer, unlike some some of these other ills of society, 
it is purely the only reason that this exists, the only reason this evil exists is because people are paying for it to happen. That's it, right? So all we have to do in order for it to stop is just stop paying for it. That's it. But that's not going to happen. And 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 this is a, this is interesting because this is very similar to like people trying to save the environment by taking a bike instead of driving, you know. Yeah. So so what what did they do when they realized that wasn't worked? They they block the roads in Parliament Square right. and they say to the government, "Listen, you're going to act now, and we're not going to shut up until you do it now." That's, okay, that's what I'm saying. That's that's exactly what I'm and, saying. And their pressure is working. Yeah, that's so good. So we go to the government and we say, "You need to stop this now." Okay, that's what I. That's something. Not, I, not, but not. We don't. You don't. Go, agree, you don't go agree. to the government. You don't go to the government and say, "Hey, the environment's kind of suffering." So, like, it'd be really great if you act now. But what we mean by act now is like improve. Okay, slightly no, improve but, our but, carbon emissions. The, but, the, the 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 Extinction Rebellion people are like, we are going to end this climate crisis but I, now. Okay, right? okay, but I agree with that method more than telling people to stop eating meat. But uh, let's. I agree with that. I, I think like I think that would be a more. You would get much more return on your activism. Yeah, but who who are you going to fill the streets with? Like the only reason there were there were enough people to so, fill the streets so, and, and campaign yeah, for climate uh, right. for, for, for for the climate crisis right. is because you convince people that they need to be acting in accordance with the, this. Philosophy. No, but this is the problem with the vegan movement because they don't accept meat eaters that want to reduce suffering of animals because if they had if they were wait wait yeah. if if they were more inclusive right and if you were like listen you could do whatever you want but let's get the government to pass this law then there would be so many people would be like okay i can get behind this but more think, people think about, but, but, more people would get behind this if you could then then we could actually make diff changes no, but look, that moves the needle that the extinction rebellion protesters are going to the government and saying we need to fix this crisis right. in its entirety right now, full stop. Okay. So if, if to be comparable, the vegans have to go to the government and say it needs to be illegal to consume animal products today. You can't tell me that someone who's in favor of eating meat can go and join that protest. Okay. It, it can't happen. Why you, not? You, I would. I eat meat and I would join that protest. But I would join... The, but the only reason you'd be able to join that process is if you actually believed that the world would be a better place no, see, if it was illegal I to want, eat meat. Okay, first you of need all, to convince no, people you I don't, don't think, eat meat, I, you shouldn't I don't be think, eating meat. Okay, if I think the law should be that every company should have no suffering for animals. And if you think that means that they cannot do it, so yes. you will effectively get the same thing, right? Yeah. I just think it shouldn't be like it should be illegal to consume meat. I think the law should be it's illegal to cause... Uh, suffering to animals okay that, that, that's in if today's that's effective, society in practice that's the same thing okay so if that's the same thing that's the law that needs to be passed because it's important that that the law shouldn't be something that is not actually causing harm if effectively you're going to get the same result well then then you but then but then look at what we're arguing about it's like it's like we're trying to abolish slavery and i'm saying no, we should pass a law abolishing slavery and you're saying no 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 we should just pass a law that that stops suffering for black people it's like i mean that's the same thing you know just campaign to end slavery no but it's about it's about making sure that you're passing a law that makes sense that is based on the suffering that is being caused right do you know what i mean like so you do, you want to make sure that you're wording it in a way. Well, now we're just talking it, about the way that the law is worded. Yeah, right? I, yeah, but it's important because it's also the messaging, right? The messaging shouldn't be it's wrong to kill animals. The messaging should be it's wrong to cause animals suffering. Yeah, and that's what the vegans are trying to argue. And they're, they're just, not, and they're though. Just, no, they are, and then they're just pointing out that the animal industry at the moment is causing suffering to animals. Yeah, so go don't go after people's individual behaviors. Go after the companies. Go after the lawmakers but, and the but, companies. But the companies only exist because of the people but and their habits. Not, yeah, well, yeah, but you cannot... That's the reason they exist. Okay, but... Okay, here, let's use slavery as yeah. an example. That's a great. Because slavery was... The, you know, the, the way that we got rid of slavery mm -hmm. was not to go by one by one to every slave owner and telling them to please, this is wrong, stop having slaves. We went and said, like, we said, okay, this is a moral crisis. We passed a law. We said this is illegal. Right? Yeah, and then there was a civil war. Right. Well, if yeah, have a civil war about it. Right. I'm I'm okay with that if it's if it's right. I'd, I'd rather avoid that and get people on my side before I go to the government. Yeah, but I'm saying that would have been impossible. I'm saying that would have I never don't, happened. I don't, I don't think that's true. Do you think? It, do you think that you would have been avoid? You would have been able to get rid of slavery during 
you know, by going out to the south and Ab- get Ab- talking to every single Ab- slave Ab- owner. Abraham Lincoln was elected on a on a platform of anti-slavery. Yeah, but he didn't manage to get rid of slavery by going out and s- handing out pamphlets and telling people that slavery no, is wrong. Imagine there was a political candidate. They passed the Ima- law. Imagine there was a political candidate who exists right now, who's running for office, who is as anti animal industry as Lincoln was anti-slavery when when he was being elected there's no way that politician would get elected today which implies that in the time when Lincoln right. was was elected right. so you people, need, so, people were more people were more right. open to the idea exactly that this so, is wrong. so good so good so if you want more people to be on board with this right yeah, but, but but get people t- convince people that they could be a get they could join you if they could their individual behaviors is not going to change much, much of a behavior and welcome them to your, you know, to your movement by saying that as long as you are OK, as long as you support us in getting politicians and laws that is going to stop animal suffering, <laughs> you're on our side. But, but in order to be in favor of stopping animal no. suffering, you need to be in favor of people stopping eating meat. N- w- not, not necessarily. Not necessarily. It's it's like saying it's like you you running like a like a like it's, a. We just mentioned the example of people like instead of having to switch from being you know driving a car to bicycle you know instead of getting people like if you actually if you pass a law that taxes gas more right oh then no no but but that that's totally different I I wouldn't be I don't want it to be like yeah we're gonna we're gonna tax farmers for no, for no, selling no, animal I'm, products no, it's I'm like not, this the, needs to no no that, stop no 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 the example I give that was not to say like we need to tax that I'm I'm just saying that policies and laws and stuff like that mm-hmm. and uh, regulations and coming up with you know those things make much you know you got much bigger changes uh, not necessarily tax or making something well, illegal making thing. slavery illegal right those things change things mu- they are much more effective than trying to change every individual's behavior and if you want to get support for those laws and those politicians then be more inclusive of who you accept as people that are against animal the suffering is, but the law that i am after mm-hmm. is one that eliminates animal suffering right so, so in order so, to support that law, you need to be in favor of eliminating no, no. animals. I'm suffering. telling you, I'm telling you that you could go to a lot of, uh, even if people actually eat meat, right? A lot of people that eat meat, if you ask them, are they against animal suffering? I know to, to you it's a contradiction because... Yeah, but you, that's the thing, everybody's against animal suffering. Yes, so you could tell, you could get more people on board, even though they, I know in your mind, because, you, because here's the thing, you're, you look, you're, the standard that you have for other people, for them to be consistent with the logic is much higher, you know, it, your standard doesn't apply to it's other people. It's not about being consistent so, with no, logic, it's about being consistent with themselves. I go to people, I and, say, I go to people and I say, listen, are you anti animal cruelty and they say yes and right. i say do you think that the, the the factory farming is animal cruelty and they go oh i don't know and so i say well here are some facts right. here is why i think animal uh, and the animal industry is is cruelty to animals and they go well i'm against animal cruelty and factory farming is animal cruelty therefore i should be against animal uh, therefore i should be against factory farming and then they go vegan okay but most of the time they don't but i would say that if from most the same person so let's say uh, two times out of ten they go vegan, right? Yeah. And and the eight times they don't, right? And those eight um, were like, okay, next time I'm not going to talk to, I'm not going to talk about an, um, animal suffering because before that I was like, yeah, animal suffering is bad, but now they're like, maybe I'm I'm, I'm not uncomfortable having that discussion now, right? So you lost that person. But I'm saying if you said if you went to the same person, so you got two out of ten, right? But if you go to the same ten again and you have a different message and you tell them like, are you against animal suffering? And they say, yes, yes, I am. And you're like, do you want politicians to also stand for, uh, to protect animals from suffering? And they say, yeah, yeah, I am. I'm like, okay, well, we have a resolution and we're going to try to do this. Do you want to support it? They were like, yeah, I'm against animals. I would say you might get five or six out of ten. But But, the resolution is to campaign for the government to ban meat. They're not going to sign that. So see, that's that's the wrong method. So you have to say like... But that's what we're going for. Yeah, okay, but... If you say to them, we're going to pass a law that is going to ban animal suffering, right? They will sign that. If you think that that, that will lead to the same thing, well, then what's the problem? Give them something that they're going to sign. No, but they're right? not, not going to sign if, it. If, they're not going to sign it if they understand what that means, unless they are against eating meat. No, but but they're not. They're not going to they, sign for. But they're if, not going to put. Their, <laughs> they're, they're not going to put their name to a petition right. that that is no, they, they, that, that is would, aiming to get rid would, of meat they if would, they don't want to get rid they of meat. Would, okay, if they understand that 
to re- if they if if they understand that okay to completely get rid of animal suffering then meat has to be banned mm-hmm. right then they might they might be more like if they if they make that if they connect those dots yeah. then they are more likely to be okay with banning meat then do you know what I mean? But exactly. So, but so then that, you don't all have. I, that's so all I'm trying to do. Okay. I'm just trying to show people that in order to be against animal suffering, you have to be against. I understand that, farming. but that's if you it. go in with the angle of let's ban meat because it causes animal suffering, you're getting no. you. No, no. Let me I tell. Fo- I follow I, the path that you that you no, that you're suggesting. That's but, exactly what I do. Yeah. Okay, but I'm telling people. Uh, I'm telling th- for other people yeah. that if you go with the path of less bad meat because it's causes animal suffering, you're gonna get higher return than if you go like, hey, let's just end animal suffering. And if they connect the dots and say like, oh, that would mean less bad meat, they are more likely then to be okay with banning meat all, all, than if you go the yeah. other way around. No, all I'm doing is connecting the dots for them. The angle that the, the angle that we take no, the, the angle let that them most, connect the dots. The angle that, that would get the, better the, results. The angle that most vegans take <laughs> right. is to go to people and say, Are you against animal suffering? And they say, Yes. And then we say, Well, okay, do you think that factory farming is animal suffering? And they right. go, I don't know. And then we talk about it. And then we see if they agree that factory farming is animal right. suffering. So no but the next step is that in, I think the next step should be, right? Okay, yeah, it causes animal suffering. But the next step should be instead of like, okay, then stop eating meat. I think the next invitation should be like, well, let's change the laws, right? And I think if you push for that, I, here's the thing. People don't want to give up. You know, you will get more, you will make, make bigger changes. Once you convince them that, okay, um, you know, animal farms cause animal suffering, then your CTR, your uh, your, you know, no, so your CTA, sorry, your call to action, right, should be something that will give you the highest return on on every request. And I think once you convince them that this is suffering, then they're like, would you join me in passing this resolution? Instead of like, would you stop eating meat? The problem, problem you would not get a result. Ev- everybody is already on the side of progress when it comes to animal cruelty in terms of like that's great that's my point in, in terms of like so use that no, but, but like what position are they going to sign like like you you put something in front of their face that says like that, that says oh we, we want to close down sea world and it's like yeah sure i'll sign that's like people are already campaigning for that that's already a thing that exists like there's no extra step being no, made but yeah and and, unless and, i and take I like, the extra step to, it, an, it, not, to, it, to animals being killed in factory farms the, ex- the next step needs to be that let's pass laws that you nobody is illegal to buy meat from any farm that Cause that makes anim- that has uh, animals are suffering. But, but right? then that that is the same I know, thing I'm as not, getting I, rid of animals. I know farms. I understand that, but that would be the next step. And I'm saying that if what well, isn't that a good thing? That's what we want to get. I'm no, just but, I mean, I'm just I mean, I mean you're just saying because my my no, whole but, point is that you're not making an argument against what I'm saying. I'm and not. Then, and then and then you're saying, I'm, but that's isn't that what you want? It's like yes, but that's my that's my point. It's like you are po- just arguing for the same thing as me, but you're sugarcoating it to try and sell it to people who don't fully understand what you're selling them. Yeah, I'm telling you that. Vegan, vegan, the vegan movement has had bad PR. I'm not going to deceive people into signing a petition. I'm not deceiving. I'm telling them exactly what what we're against. I'm telling. Which, just- which is factory farms. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah, but my, I'm telling you that the vegan movement so far. So you're you're talking about the animal rights activists that are like oh sea world let's ban this and people sign it right. But I'm just saying the vegans have ruined their activism as well, right? Because a lot of people are like oh you're one of those you know people you you know even uh, even animal rights activists that people would be like yeah i want i'm i'm against you know this i'm against that you know now they're being grouped with the vegans that people don't want to listen to right and i think they they even harmed other animal rights activists causes i'm just saying well if you think they think that their methods are working copy them stop asking people to stop eating meat ask them to join you in making political changes no, I'm, I'm making a different argument I make yeah. all I'm doing is making but we're not I'm, I'm, we're not disagreeing on that part I'm, I'm making a philosophical case that it is immoral to eat meat from a factory farm so yeah, that what you're saying is not pr- okay are you are you just going to make philosophical arguments or are you going to try to make a point that makes a difference well I'll do both but I think that I think that the, 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 the fields need to be filled by different people. You need the philosophy to base the activism upon. How you do the activism is separate from what the philosophy is. And I'm interested in what the philosophy is. Is it morally... So say that again, your philosophical point. What's, what was your philosophical? What well, you you, 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 the philosophical point is just that we should minimize suffering, unnecessary suffering. No, no, but you also said so you made a moral judgment on eating meat. What, so, sorry, I'm, I'm not... You wrong. said you, your point is that eat, because we need to reduce suffering, mm-hmm. eating meat is immoral. Yeah. Okay. 
Does well, eating meat is not immoral, but but the the treatment of the animals is eating more meat immoral. No. So we sh- okay. So we should be allowed to eat meat then. In no, in specific, is, if if no suffering is involved, then yeah. Okay, but if you know that you buying this meat is going to cause is you buying meat that was you know the animal suffered then yes that's immoral that's immoral do you think getting in a car is immoral driving a car is immoral why why are you going with this well i'm asking you for you thinking driving a car i don't depends on the circumstances but no not intrinsically again do you think like causing like you know carbon dioxide is immoral like we have like a climate change crisis right now right do you think it's immoral that's a complicated question no it's not i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't I wouldn't have a problem if someone said that it's immoral to drive when you could get a bike or walk or get the bus. Right. So you think it's immoral? So you think it's immoral to drive a car? I think if you think that the climate emergency is as urgent as people it are is, suggesting. What it is. Then if you have the capability to cycle instead of getting a car, then it's Well, when we were coming here, we were... We were going to get a cab instead of a bus, but we shouldn't have even considered a cab based on that. It was immoral for us to consider the cab. We should have just stick with the bus. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe we should have just walked here. Neither the bus. We paid the bus. I don't. I don't. I don't know about that you because pay- again, then we're getting into what we were talking about over lunch earlier uh, about the the trade off between, like, yeah, okay, so you've minimized your carbon footprint by by not getting the bus even though like the difference you make is the bus is running anyway and you've just added a tiny bit of weight no you you paid the, the industry that is burning gas you you supported that industry which is you know you paid but it's money still, it's still burning the same amount of gas like the money it spends on on bringing the yeah, gas but if you increase the demand then there needs to be but you're not you're not response. increasing the demand for the gas you you except for like if a bus the, is, the added if weight if buses get if two buses get too busy, then they need to provide more buses at some point. Okay, that's true. But right. that, that, yeah, I, I see. What, I see what you're saying. But like, there's a trade-off in saying like the conversation that we're having now. There's a good chance that because this office is quite far away from where we were, we wouldn't have made that trip walking. We just wouldn't have done it. Right. right? There's the bikes. Are there bike rentals here? Uh, yeah. We probably, could have ran. It's probably. Ran. Yeah, but like we wouldn't have, right? Why? Well, we I should, wouldn't have. We should have. Why not? I, 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 immoral. I, I would, is I would, that immoral, though? I wouldn't though? have done so. Okay, do you think if we got a and What cab- I'm saying is that the conversation we're having now is probably going to do more good than getting on the bus is going to do bad. Right. Okay, so that's my point. The conversations that we could have with people regarding what to do with meat, like mm-hmm. in, instead of telling them to stop eating meat, we could have better conversations about things that moves the needle. I'm uh, I'm just saying, like, get, getting people... Like, you could conv- I could convince um, 100 p- people or 1,000 people to ride bikes instead of driving cars, right? I think that's time. that time is wasted. I could have, instead of doing that, I could have gotten 100 people to start lobbying, calling, uh, dra- getting petitions, going to the news, talking to politicians, and j- get them to pass laws, right? Yeah. To make, I, I, the reason why I say you know, tax, put, higher taxes on carbon emissions which will automatically change the behavior of um, you know millions of people mm-hmm. right if i increase if i if i could manage to lobby the congress in a way that just increases the you know carbon emissions just by a small percentage right i just now change the behavior of millions of people with the same amount of time and energy that i would have spent getting 1000 people to ride bicycles instead of cars. The thing is, if I want to pass a law, if I want to be transparent about my goals, which I think I have to be, then if my if my aim is to get rid of animal suffering, the analogy would be like getting rid of cars, getting rid of fuel emissions, then I'm not going to be able to get people to support a, co- a cause that wants to get rid of no, cars the unless, I... unless you first convince them right, the... that they don't need a car themselves. You need them to already have given up their car and realize they don't need it and be no, riding no, no, around on no, no. bikes okay. before they'll be able to go to the government and say, can we ban cars, the... please? I understand. They're the ex- not going to drive up to up to the government and say, hey, let's ban cars. Like That's, that's not going to happen. The example I give you is not not to say like you do, I know you want an absolute like ban, uh, ending of consumption of meat the example I'm giving is not to say like I want a gradual change the example I'm t- 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 giving you is to just make the point that you could you you know the, the 
the changes that you could make is more significant if you focus on the right messages and the right and the right people. And because and especially when it comes to lobbying and making changes in the government, you will actually have to convince a less number of people to because you know because you know lobbying a government or getting political changes doesn't require you the same number of people that uh, to get to do this then then when it comes to, if you want to make a change that requires people to change the behavior individually by convincing them you need a higher number of people to talk to right but if you're making if you're trying to lobby the government or trying to push for a political change you actually need to convince a lower number of people and the behavior of higher number of people will change automatically based on those new new laws and regulations i don't think it, it changes in the way that we need it to change unless you can you can have you can have a government that is voted in by people who agree with the thing that we're trying to change well, I mean, no, you're going to need to change the minds of a lot more. Yeah, people. but but okay. So here's the thing: th th that's not how actually politics works. Well, I, I can't go to that, the government and say let's ban me unless the majority but, of the population but, wants to but ban actually, me. But actually, that's how that's how actually. If you look at how the government works, is actually the way I'm telling you. Because if you tell when they when they do increase carbon emissions uh, and taxes on carbon emissions, right? If you go tell if you you didn't have to convince people like if you actually spent your time talking to people and telling them to drive less that wouldn't have worked and you didn't actually we didn't actually go and convince these people that they need to drive less for them to vote politicians but in you, and you both. actually no but the thing is that eventually they did do that they for example in you know in Canada they did increase yeah, carbon you, you can do, you can do both like the people yeah but why the, would the you people, the opportunity cost is a high the, the people who are going and protesting in Westminster these days for extinction rebellion are also the kinds of people who turn off yeah. the lights in the houses when you, they leave the room like you can do both at the same okay, time okay you can do both but one is one of them is coming at the cost to another and also so you could you could achieve what I'm you could achieve what I'm suggesting m more effectively if sure. you welcome meat eaters to your but to what, the but what you're suggesting is an advocacy for a position that I don't believe in. Well, why not? I mean, is reduce the suffering? I, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in. You don't believe in reducing I suffering. I don't, I don't believe in improving the conditions of animals in captivity. That's not my position. I believe right. in eliminating it. Well, that's reduces suffering. I, f I thought you were on the side of reducing suffering. To the highest extent possible. Right. And the highest extent possible is not making the cages bigger. Well, yeah, no, but it's that's not, not what It's I'm not saying. letting them walk around in the grass for half a year. Okay, but it's, that's not what I'm saying. It's ending I'm, the industry. I'm saying I reduce, the, my method reduces more suffering than your method. Do you think, do you think, I'm interested, and also because I'm conscious of time, because if you right, don't want to have a second discussion, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. then so, um, yeah. it's fine. I've got a, I've got a, a call tonight. I've got a call. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Drew, actually. Uh, oh, really? Stephen and Rachel, yeah, we're organizing something. But uh, Hi, Drew. <laughs> I'm interested. If you're watching. If, do you think that your advocacy mm. for yeah. this um, reformist stance on animal... <laughs> Don't call me a no, but, no, but that, that's what it is. Like, okay. that's fine. Okay. Like, that is what you're advocating. Okay. If you think there's something wrong with the reformist position, then maybe you need to rethink your position, but that, that is I what will, you're advocating. I will, I will rethink my position. I'm, I'm, I'm putting forward like an abolitionist stance, right? Do you think that your reformist position, I'm just interested here, is genuinely <laughs> because you care about reducing the suffering of animals, or do you think it's more because you want to delay the getting rid of meat because you like meat? Well, as somebody that has given up on a lot of food yeah. recently, and as you know, and some, I, I think I am capable of giving up on anything. I'm sure you're capable of it, but what no. do you think your motivation is? Do you my think, my motivation is to reduce suffering. I mean, I when it comes to willpower, I, I think I've proven that I, I can do whatever is necessary, right? So, Well, I mean, you, you could be a vegan right now. I can, and, but and I, choose that, not, I that, choose not to be. That would, say, that would save real lives. It might not save many. It might not save yeah. as many as any kind of political activism. But you can do both at the same time, and you would be saving no, lives. I mean, I could I could stop driving cars, right? I could stop, as you said, I could stop buy not buy this phone and give it to charity, right? Yeah. I I could. There's many things you you could start, sell your watch and give to charity. There's many little things that we could yeah, do. Yeah, consider that's, doing it after reading that book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying we don't. But I instead of focusing on little things, I rather focus on the big picture. I rather focus on the things that really move the needle rather than the little small things that I rather focus my time and energy on things that reduce the suffering. I think maybe I, I'm wrong. I don't, maybe I don't, I'm wrong. I don't see the the uh, 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 a baby cow being ripped away from its it, its mother as as a as a little 
thing. I see that as that is the big picture. Well, relatively, the, relative the, the big picture. I'm talking about relative. The big picture is the details. The big picture is what's going on, right? If you look at it as a big picture of animal cruelty, animal suffering, animal industry, it's like you, you're not. The, you, we need to pay attention to the individual cases of what's going on in these farms. Yeah, but re- obviously, okay. So, for example, um, with my activism, right? Mm. Okay, so let's say there is this one like this is something i have to have to struggle with okay we get hundreds of message of uh, of ex-muslims in other countries asking us to spend a lot of time trying to get them out of the place where they are and we know a lot of them are hopeless a lot of them we can't right and we don't have the resources and time and energy and sometimes we partner up with people to try to evaluate which cases have the highest chances of you know working out in which some of them don't right but then when the one that we think like okay this is a better case we might be able to help here we're doing that as the cost to not helping a lot of people so by not helping those other people we're not suggesting that those lives don't matter we're not suggesting that that suffering is not significant we're just focusing on the and the place where we think we could make the biggest mm. different difference, right? And I think so, the place that I personally can make the biggest difference mm-hmm. is philosophically convincing people that they shouldn't be eating meat. I'm not a, I'm not a political lobbyist, right? Right. And I don't mind people do it. Don't get me wrong. I don't mind when Ricky Gervais makes a post saying, you know, don't leave your dog on the street. Like, fine, whatever. Does it does it annoy me that he's being hypocritical because he he's gonna like just com- complain endlessly about the suffering of a particular dog or or some footage from SeaWorld and then go and enjoy a steak. Yes, it right. does get on my nerves. But I'm not going to go and say, delete this tweet, Ricky, you know? Right. Like, there have been times when I've considered retweeting people who are, like, just, just <laughs> bawling themselves into into absolute frenzies over some kind of somebody like a video of someone kicking kicking a cat or something and people are like who is this monster and i'm like well, you're the monster because you're like you're doing this you're I doing mean, you're causing worse suffering but like i'm not going to do that because i understand what you're saying like that's not going to be helpful right but i'm also not going to sway in my stance and i'm also not going to sway in what i have to say right it, it's kind of like it's like the different positions needed for, for something like atheism yeah it, think about new atheism you've got like the, the most effective, the thing that's probably caused most people to, to turn uh, into atheists was probably someone like Richard Dawkins making a kind of like, well, let's look at the science. And, you know, you know, if we look at religion, then we can see that it's a really it's a really unpleasant character in fiction and, and yada, yada. And then like, yeah, that's great. But you also need the Christopher Hitchens in the background going, this is a, this is awful. This is slavery. And you're 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 right. subduing yourself to the to the to the celestial North Korea. Like you need you need both. Right. right? OK. Yeah. And, and as long as Hitchens doesn't step on Dawkins toes. Right. It's probably fine. But Hitchens, Hitchens would say of Dawkins, or, or maybe not Dawkins, but like a, a, a moderate atheist campaigner, he would say, listen, I've got no problem with you campaigning for the rights of atheists, but I don't think you're going far enough. And this is what I believe. And this is what I'm going to say. But you do your thing. And I'll do my thing, and right. we'll see what and we'll see what the court of public opinion has to say. And I'm going to continue telling people right. that I think it is wrong to eat. And and when and if they're going to and if you're worried that they're going to start uh, seeing animal rights campaigning in general infiltrated by my kind of veganism, then you don't need to worry because I will make it crystal clear that I am not a part of the crowd that says we need to we need to shut down the tanks at SeaWorld and we need to stop people from kicking cats across the street. But let's not go vegan. That's not my crowd. Those right. aren't my people. You know, I'm not on Ricky Gervais's team here. Right. I like what he's doing. It's fine. But that's not what I'm doing. So, like, the the answer for the vegan is not to lessen or, or uh, lessen their approach or make it milder. It's to separate themselves from the other cause. So that people, if they want to, they can be part of the animal rights movement or they can be part of the vegan movement. And mm. they get to make that choice. They don't become one thing. Now, for me... If it, those aren't very good terms because I see veganism as a, as a necessary component of animal rights. But mm. just imagine it was called something else. Imagine it was like anifer, well, a, a, animal welfareism, which some people call it. They're right. in favor of animal welfareism. Right, okay, right. great. No right. problem with people being in favor of animal welfareism like issue, yeah. to, except to the extent that the logic should. But it's, it's like my problem with being vegetarian. It's like, well, if you... If if you recognize it's wrong enough to stop eating meat, then you should but recognize see, it's wrong enough to do the But you see how you're pushing away well. people that are making difference. But, but I'm not going. I'm not going to go to vegetarians and say you evil bastard, be a vegan. But I'm, vegans I'm just, do. I'm, well, maybe but they do. But that's 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 what you're talking about. The PR thing. I'm going to turn around and say, listen, 
there's the vegetarian arguments. Go and right. read them if you want. But that's not me. I don't agree with them. They're not my camp. Can Can I tell you something? The CEO of Atheist Republic, mm-hmm. um, Ali Jackson, she um, she was she was vegan. She was a vegan. Yeah. And she was telling people that her child needs certain food, like she cooks for them, and I don't know, give them uh, milk or something because of what the doctor says that she requires, mm-hmm. right? So she was she wasn't eating meat herself, but she would cook for them. And she got she was attacked. She by uh, and she was doxxed, and she received threats. The police had to come. She went missing for six months. Yeah. People, she had to change address. Yeah. She, people were threatening her that they're going to come. You you are advocating for raping cows. We're going to come rape your children and by vegans, right? And this is like the PR, the PR of the vegan movement is really bad. Yeah. It, that's and it like, has turned off a lot. Of, I'm not, I'm not arguing. I know, I know of course you're not, but, yeah. but that's what I'm saying is that. So I shouldn't say that's what I'm saying. I hate when people do that when, right. when, when someone makes an argument. It's like, but that, that's what I'm saying. And then they just say whatever they were going to say anyway. Yeah. Um, like, the face of veganism just needs to be more rational. Right. In the same way, it, we need vegans, popular vegans, to come out and say, yeah, obviously that's ridiculous. And you know what? That's what they're doing. The right. big vegan names. Nobody supports that kind of thing. Yeah. Right? That's not minimizing suffering. That's not what you're doing. Right. You know? But 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 you do see how it toxic it has become. No, because the vegan I, moment. Because I, one, one phrase that really stuck out for me from Singer's book, the first time I read it, uh, which is what changed my life, that, that was the book that made me go vegan single-handedly. Right. And in fact, just the first chapter. I can't remember the exact phraseology, but it was something like it's in the, it's in the rightness of our cause, not the, the violence of our bombs, that the course of victory lies. Something like that. Right. And, I, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. It's like, I can think that what she's doing by feeding her kid milk when she doesn't have to is, is uh, advocating for the rape of cows and the separation of their children. Like, I can think that that's an evil thing to do without thinking that's an evil person and without thinking that they deserve any kind of recompense for it. All I'm saying is right. I'd, I mean, I'd rather you didn't do it and here's how, and like I'm going to try and philosophically help you understand why you shouldn't and right. give you practical advice as to how to not do that. But I don't think you're a bad person, mm. right? Like I was eating meat not that long ago. Like, right. And I didn't think I was a bad person. In fact, I did for a while because someone came to me at a, at, at a drunk party in a forest once and just randomly asked me, do you think you're a moral person? And I said, yes. And then they told me a little bit about animal suffering and I was like, ha. I guess I'm not a moral person. Right. Um, and so, like, like I, I understand how you can be a meat eater and not think that you need to stop immediately because I was that person not that long ago. Right. So I'm not going around telling people that you're immoral, you're right, like that. That would be ridiculously arrogant and high-horsed. Right, right, right. All I'm saying is that what I've, I have come to realize recently that what I was doing and advocating for is one of the greatest moral evils of, of our time. And I want to help you understand why I think that. And hopefully you'll join my team. And if you don't, then give it some time. Yeah. Give it some reflection. And hopefully you'll, you'll end up there eventually. Okay, okay. But as far as okay. I'm concerned, if, 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 um, I'm, if I'm approaching someone on this, then yeah, I'll take a soft approach. I'll say, right. you know, have you considered this? But if you ask me what I think, you don't have to ask twice. Right, right, I'll right. tell you it's wrong. I'll tell you that it's immoral. I'll tell you that it's the gravest moral sin that it, that, that currently exists other than perhaps the charity crisis. Right. And I, I think, I mean... And I won't apologize for doing so. No, you shouldn't be. You, you shouldn't know? be. I w- of course you shouldn't be. And I think even if I disagree with you, I would be... Um, I would be more... I mean, I think people should be more um, against you backing down on your views than the fact that they think you're wrong. Well, it's not about backing, because you're not advocating me back, backing down my views. You're just yeah. advocating me kind of changing my approach or changing the, the tactical way of going about it. But I right. think that my skills, if I have skills, lie not in like rallying crowds. Like someone like Earthling Ed is great is a great example of this. I mean, he is mm-hmm. just, he is, a, not only is he good at debating people and talking to people, but he's very good at being, uh, at being diplomatic. And he's very good at rallying protests. He's leading the Animal Rights March, which is happening in, in August. So, but do you see my case for people that are activists? Yeah, it's like, like he, he's, he's doing great. Like, I really love what he's doing. Right. But that's not my job. Right. My okay. job is to stand up and give a speech, uh, like explaining why, why I think something's wrong and motivating people to agree with okay, me. But, that's my job. Well, that's at least what I'm when it do. comes to the activism, do you see why 
do you see some a little bit why i think of my course, method of course i do but, okay, but the okay. activism is is a is a is a big ball game like right. philosophy is part of the activism <clears throat> okay but he one last question before we move on um how could if you if you apply the standard to you know even I I want to focus on big changes and you're saying no individual behavior one by one is also important then how do you justify applying that to not eating meat but not to not giving up your watch to charity not giving up your shoes to charity like wouldn't that yeah. be have to be consistent well, with that, everything that's else that's something I'm battling with now and in the okay. same way that when I first started reading Peter Singer's Animal Liberation it took probably like a year before uh, of thinking it over and arguing with and not, before, never not never getting to a car before, always reading before, about. before I realized this is something I need to do and I worked out how to do it like right. I worked out that I disagreed with Singer on many points and I disagreed with this and I disagreed with that and so when the argument comes to me like so now I am a vegan but I'm a very specific kind of vegan like I'm not against killing animals per se as we've mm -hmm. as we've discovered um, like I, I have a a uh, a view of veganism that I think is is consistent and practical. And now I read Singer's uh, The Life You Can Save, and I think, oh shit, here we go again. Like, here's another thing that I'm gonna have to change my life. Right. It's gonna take me a little bit of time to navigate it philosophically, just... read the criticisms. But if it, if it is the case, if I become convinced, mm. and, and I mean as convinced as I am at the vegan cause, if I truly become as convinced as I am at the vegan cause now, that it is the, 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 the thing that I should be morally obliged to do is to sell my watch and give the money to charity, then I'll do so. But how, how, would, it, how would it not? If it applies for veganism, it should apply for everything else. My point is that it does, my point is that it's so impractical to trying to change the world like one, you know, one sand at a time when, you know, it doesn't. Well, know, it, it, is di just, it is different. I, it is different because I'm advocating. I, what I'm saying is when I'm advocating an ethical position is if everybody acted the way I'm acting, I think the world would be a better place. So if I halved my meat consumption, right. if everybody halved their meat consumption, then there'd be a lot less animal suffering, but there'd still be animal suffering. The only way to actually get rid of animal suffering is if everybody stopped eating meat entirely. However, but I don't need to sell everything I own and give to charity, because if everybody gave five, ten percent of their income to charity, then world poverty gets eliminated in terms of absolute poverty. So if I'm advocating for a position that everybody can follow, all I need to say is let's all get together and give up five percent of our, of our income to charity. But neither of those are going to happen. Well, it, it depends. So you have to give everything to charity it, it, because people are not going to give five percent to charity. It depends. It depends on your outlook. Yeah, but my outlook is that you're never going to get to a situation where everybody is giving five percent to charity. So in that world, you have to give up everything you have. Well, there might, but I'm just saying there, it, there, might, just, there might be other I, ways to do it. Too. But I'm just saying if you want to be consistent. But I'm just saying I don't think this is the good way. I just think it's so impractical. I think if people start focusing on ch making changes where you get the most impact. Instead of focusing on these little things, I, I think I, yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, but it's okay. like I I don't think that me going vegan particularly has had much of an effect on the suffering of animals, except to the extent that because I've gone vegan, my friends went vegan, and because I've gone vegan, many of my viewers have gone vegan, and they've right. emailed, me, emailed me to do so. We've probably saved quite a few lives doing that, right? But all, in terms of economic numbers, I've, however, like it's not. I think solve you would the have problem, right? Right, right? And in the same way, yeah, giving five percent of my income isn't going to solve the problem. You have to give out all. We're selling everything was, yeah. But like, no, because I'm advocating a position that everyone can follow. I'm not saying that my position here is doing the most that it possibly can for the suffering. It, it's just you, saying so, I'm holding a position that if everybody followed, the world would be a better place. That's what the ethical person should do. Right. They should but say it's, it's as unrealistic. How to live. It's unrealistic as the Christians say, like, well, if we shouldn't advocate for people being gay because if everybody was gay, then we would like we will go and sing. That, like, that's no, not. I mean, I mean in, in I, the I'm, slightest way. Analogous. No, I'm just saying that it's you're advocating for something that you say would only be successful if everybody follow gay, it. Gay, and gay, I'm just right, saying, gay rights activists don't campaign for everyone to be gay. No, they I'm, campaign to the right for the right to be gay. I wasn't. No, no, no. I was talking about what how. It Logical, the, the fundamentalist, fundamentalist Christians' position yeah. is not the gay rights activists, I right? I was criticizing the other side, but I'm just I'm just saying you're advocating for a position that will only work if everybody does it, and I'm just saying in both the five percent situation and everybody going vegan is neither of that is very impact like it's not going to happen. It's unrealistic to think it's going to happen. It only will happen when it's economically feasible and people it makes it easier for people to make that switch and economically feasible in a way that uh, meat becomes extremely cheap. Uh, artificial meat will become extremely cheap to get. We can we can make it like it, imagine well, imagine if you... imagine if America mm. didn't have a culture of tipping. 
right? Money right. That, that just didn't exist. And tipping right. was not a concept that existed. And then people were, were arguing that the minimum wage is a big problem. Like people aren't being paid enough in America. And someone has this bright idea and says, well, if everybody, when they paid for their meal at a restaurant, just gave like 10% extra, mm -hmm. then everyone would like, w would have a better wage. And you come along and say, yeah, but that's, we're not going to be able to convince everybody to do that. Well, it's like, yeah, that's what's happened. We, there, there has been a culture created around yeah, tipping it's like now now people just tip because it, it's just culturally obliged to people it's just what you do in america that's a much smaller and the same that's much but, as much as much uh, a smaller barrier to cross than what you're suggesting the, no, but the, the same thing can happen with charity what you could have what you could do is okay actually what you know what a good solution you know how the, the sooner we get artificial meats um economically feasible for most people to be able to afford the faster we're going to get to a situation where animals are not suffering. One thing we could have done is we could have put a tax on meat that funds, you know, um, the research on mm. making an artificial meat. Uh, yeah, no, feasible. That, that's fine. I yeah. don't. I disagree. As long as the end goal is yeah. to get rid of yeah, meat. Yeah. So see, it's a fine. policy like that, I think, if advocating for a policy like that would have gotten us so much faster to, to a place where yeah. we wouldn't we wouldn't be having animals. But I, I couldn't have got people on my side for that because I would have to say, hey guys, I know you love your meat. How about we just advocate for a tax on meat? You can keep your meat, you can keep your meat and we'll just tax it for now, but eventually we're going to get rid of it and you'll never be able to have it again. Like, No, you will, but ooh, it would be artificial meat. I don't know meat. about that. No, no, you will. It would be artificial meat. It would taste even better than real meat. But I think I... like. See, you're not even. You're, the, I can't. You, you, I it's can't, such an easy sell. I it's just, such I, an easy sell. I can't. But, but the thing is, I can't be. I I can't see myself saying. Right. You know. Oh, don't worry. Okay, then I'll do that. Don't, it's like, don't you worry. It's going to taste the same as me. It's like, I don't give a damn if it tastes the same as me. I don't care how it tastes. You should care because that's the message that is going to reduce suffering. That's how. That's is what the, you should care. I'm. I'm not going to go around. I'm not going to go around implying that what something tastes like is anywhere near as important uh, it's not as i'm a, not suggesting as, as the okay. of an animal. It, it doesn't it shouldn't matter that's the position you have to imply in order to actually no. get people on your side well, okay so unless you, you deceive and lie to them. okay so it shouldn't matter but it does to people and that's the reality that we're dealing with. so the best i could do is go around if i want to be honest no that's not the best the best i can do if i want to be honest with people is to go around and say hey guys so i know that the taste is really important to you i think that's absolutely ridiculous and absurd and like <laughs> it's totally immoral and wrong but right. but look if that's what we're going to play with and that's what we're going to play with now come sign my petition to eventually get rid of meat in the hopes that one day we might grow some lab-grown meat that probably tastes about the same but you'll still complain about because of the placebo effect that makes you think it tastes worse let's see how that works out it works better than convincing people that they're, they're what they're doing is I don't evil. think that's true. Okay. Right. Veganism is, is growing at a rate that it never has done before. People said that vegan... It's it's like the arguments that were being made 20 years ago. Vegans will never make a single difference. You look now, there are aisles dedicated in shopping centers to vegan I think, products. Right. I think if you look that at... Would, that wouldn't have been thinkable. Like, if I said... If, I, if we were having this argument 20 years ago, and you said it's not feasible, and I said, what if I... What, what if in like... Has meat consumption gone up or down? As a proportion, it's gone down. But total wise has gone up. Yeah, so there was a study. There was a study that's done. So it hasn't moved the needle. Like there, there was more a, no, animals. It's, it's, are... mo it's moved the needle. There, there was a study. There was a study done very recently in the UK that showed that I th it was something ridiculous, like uh, like mm. like a half of all young people, however whichever age range they used to define it there, are now drinking plant based milk instead of cow's milk. Have you like done that? That just just think about that for a second. Right. right? Just think about that for a second. Okay, half. Also, I, I I don't want to get the statistic wrong, but it was something it was something absurd, like a half, maybe maybe three quarters or something. I just remember being blown away by the statistic. It might be less, it might be a quarter, but let's say even if it's a quarter or a third or whatever, like a third, a half, how whatever it is, of young people are now just not having milk. Like I, that's big. Have you thought about the opportunity cost of the people uh, and also the negative effect of people that are moving away from animal right, right activism? And also the people that the higher number of people that you would have gotten, like imagine if you managed to get that l response. Imagine how many people you would have gotten if you uh, if you were focusing on reducing suffering I rather than people giving up personal choices. I don't think that less people are supporting and donating to and and being in favor of things like anti uh, ivory every trade charities no, no, no. Every because of veganism. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's remotely every time true. every time you're talking to people about so every time you capture that attention of people and they're listening to you about something it comes with an opportunity cost it comes with an opportunity cost 
So there is a call. There is a call. Even if you haven't lost anybody, even if you haven't pushed anybody away from something, because you're saying to them something instead of something else, there's an opportunity cost associated. Mm-hmm. But let's not. Uh, but yeah, we, we've gone for too long. But was it, um, sorry, did I? Was it okay? Like, do you think like? No, I hate. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, it's fine. Like, it's like you're, you're making good points. Like, okay. it, it's 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 a challenging thing to to engage with. I don't know how to navigate the the practicalities right. of advocating veganism. All I know how to do is advocate the baseline philosophy that it's immoral. I don't know the best way to ingrain that into the political system. Right? Okay, okay. And that's what I'm trying. To, and that's what I'm trying to explore. And I think okay. the best way to make sure that a position that you're putting forward is feasible is to try and attack it from all angles. And since it seems to have roughly stood that test, I can say that. I think you've made a good point, and I'll mull it over. Oh, you know, thank you. But do, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like because if if I just like shut down your argument as quickly as possible, and and I I feel like I've done a good job of doing so, then I won't bother thinking about it that much because I I think like I've like I've tackled it, but because it's kind of stood the the throws that I've given at it, it's going to make me think about it more. So it's like it's the best way to get to it, right? Oh, right. Thank you. So okay. like these kinds of conversations people people it's amazing people i mean people will probably listen to the like there was a point about halfway through where we were practically shouting at each other and people <laughs> probably listen to it like god these guys must hate each other it's like no, no. Like, like we're having an argument you know i yeah. i, I love this is one of the things i love about the friends i've chosen at university like well i'll choose people who will have these discussions i remember once with with probably my best friend at university we argued about the death penalty right and we were arguing about it very fiercely like really really fiercely and then and, and we're like in depth and he's, and he's like no no that's just that's just not how it works like you're being stupid like <laughs> and then he kind of checks his watch and goes like oh shit now i gotta go and i was right. like all right yeah yeah see ya <laughs> and it was it was fine you know it's just like whatever like you just kind of you just drop it in a second like yeah. the, the the emotional intensity is in the argument right right not in the person right it's, you know? yeah I, I wish more people learn how to do that because I think a lot of people end up hating each other if they have passions. No, but you just got to show them it's possible. You just got to show them conversations right. and show them the aftermath where people just completely drop it immediately. Right. I, well, another reason why I was uncomfortable about having this conversation with you because is because a lot of times I have passionate disagreements with people and sometimes they end up, you know, not liking me and not talking to me again and the reason why i was hesitant about having this conversation with you is because i really really don't want like <laughs> like this for, uh, like having you as a friend <laughs> so but yeah. there's other people who are like okay you're not my friend well i no, don't care really this good. is something i want to keep anybody anybody who's who's willing to have an honest philosophical discussion with me as a friend of mine okay you know, like it, it, it the only the only the only reason that i would have to say i didn't really like that person i didn't like that conversation i'm right. not, not going to spend more time with that person is if I feel they're being dishonest, if I feel that uh, I mean I mean that's that's probably it really. I mean even if I'm arguing with a racist or something, if I think that that their racism is based on what they genuinely to believe honest philosophical convictions that they can't help but be convinced of, right. then I'm not going to dismiss them as a friend purely on that basis. If they're a racist because they're just a racist and they're using sophistry to try and get their point across, then I'll I'll probably be like yeah I don't really like that person. But like mm. it's about the integrity that a person holds. Right, because if a person's philosophical position is honest, then that means it's open to changing. The reason why it's important to to base it on honesty is because if you have an honest racist who, right. who is basing it on an honest philosophy they're convinced of, then if you show them why their philosophy is flawed, then they will change their mind. Right. right, so that's a good person to have as a friend because you can talk to them about it. But if someone is not basing it on honest philosophy, then there's nothing you can do to change their mind. So then, then it's worth throwing them to the rafters. But right. if I presented an argument to you that you actually thought was good. For an abolitionist stance towards veganism, I think you would adopt that stance because I think that you're intellectually honest with yourself, right? right. So, well, I hope so. I well, it, it's sometimes you don't recognize it in yourself. Like I, I recogn- I, I caught myself after reading the life you can save, trying to make excuses for owning a watch or owning a guitar or whatever it may be. Right, I, I right, caught, right. I caught myself doing it in my head, and I thought, stop this, you know, like be, be honest with yourself. Right. And that's, that's a hard thing it, to do. That's, that's why when I decided to be honest with myself on that point, mm. I decided, okay, I'm going to be honest with myself. I'm evil. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that was the most honest I could get. Yeah, and that's what happened to me with veganism. And my answer to that, right. in turn, was to say, well, let's fix that. You know, right. My realization was, was, was one of evil. It wasn't like, I remember I was sat having a meal, and it was around the time I was reading Singer's book. And but, I, I thought to myself, right. it's not that... Were I alive in the 18th century, I would be anti-slavery. I suddenly realized, because I was sat there eating this meal, and I thought, Jesus, if this meal had been prepared by a slave, I'd be eating it. Right. 
God, that's not a nice realization. In order to say that I'd be against slavery back then, I have to say I'm against animal cruelty now. But but then what I realize is that I cannot not be evil. I could only be less evil because I realize that it's all impra- it's almost impossible to yeah. get rid of everything. Well, right? a good a good first step in that direction is to advocate for the getting rid of 74 billion creatures being tortured and killed every, every Well, I year. do it. That's, that's, mean, that's a pretty small step in the right direction, I think. I do advocate for that while eating my meat. Yeah, I used to do that. All right. I used to do that. And but then I, and then I don't I, and, and I don't I think that's a contradiction. And then I stopped. Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't think it was a contradiction either and then I did. And okay. then I stopped. And now I feel even better than I I feel better morally than I ever have in my entire life. Okay. You know. Well, if I'm convinced, I will stop. I can I can now stroke dogs again without feeling bad, which most people don't, but to me and I started thinking about this. I used to see a dog in the street and I'd go like, oh, that's such a cute dog. Oh, my God, this is bad. What the hell am I doing? I could stroke a pig and pet it and have some fun, you know, and watch it enjoy uh, eating grass and at some point kill it and eat it. Could you watch it being put through the process of a factory farm? I can, but from, I would from, be upset. From, yeah, but that, that, that's the thing, right? Yeah. You would be upset by it. And if you yeah. if you'd be upset by watching your food be prepared, then why the hell are you eating it? Well, I mean... I, well, I know the answer to that question, but yeah. let's not get back into it. But you know okay. what I mean? It's like a rhetorical point. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. All right. That was in the Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure thing. All right. All right. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.